Welcome back to my Q&A sessions, replying to interesting inquiries from our YouTube viewers. Last time, we answered a range of questions about signal levels. Now, most of the remaining questions are covered by the other broad topic of signal routing. So, let's return to episode one and the question, what is the importance of a mono channel of a mixer? Well, on a mixer, you can find two types of mono channels, mono inputs and mono outputs. And there are good reasons why actually most channels are mono. Most musical instruments are mono. Their sound comes from one place, like the horn of a trumpet, the shell of a drum, the body of a violin, and the mouth of a singer. So you use one microphone close to the instrument or voice and you plug it into a mono input channel. In a similar way, sound often needs to be output to single loudspeakers or a single cluster of speakers, such as one for each musician on stage or one for a central subwoofer. On digital mixers, Two mono channels can be often combined to create one stereo channel where necessary. I hope that helps to answer your question. How to mix episode 10 is about EQ for drums. And I received a question from Echo419. If I'm using a mixer or interface, will the stock plugins in my door, that is digital audio workstation, also work for live drums, or must I EQ the drums on my mixer instead? Well, that's an interesting one. The features in computer software for music production are very similar to those found in physical mixing desks, but often with one key difference. The software may not be designed for fast, real-time use. So, in most cases, it's best to use the EQ of the mixing desk for live sound mixing. The processing in the computer might take too long and by the time you hear it, it can sound delayed and put off the performers. Also, using the physical controls of the mixer will allow you to make much faster adjustments than a single mouse can achieve. You may like to use software plugins for additional effects such as reverb and echo, which are not so time critical, but I would hesitate to recommend it unless you have invested in a very high quality and low latency system. Now episode 14, which is about panning. Kenneth asks, why his live stream sounds mono even though he panned his guitar right and his keyboard left. Well, I can think of a couple of reasons for this. First, which output channel is sending to the streaming system? Are you sure it's the stereo channel? For example, perhaps your stereo master is sending to a mono matrix channel before it goes to the stream to provide extra level adjustment though in which case the panning would be lost. As a solution, try to combine two matrix channels to create a stereo pair. Or perhaps the streaming equipment is set to work in mono mode. Or maybe the streaming software only deals with mono transmissions. And if that's the case, I'm sorry that I can't help you without knowing all the details about your system. But I'm sure that with a little research, you could find the answer. Now, on to episode 17, which is all about the sub, mono, and matrix outputs. Iku Easy asks, on my MGP32, how do I separate the low frequency from the main stereo mix? Because after setting the LPF on the mono output, I still have low frequency sounds like kick and bass 
coming out from my main. So, it sounds like the mono output is set up to work with a subwoofer. The LPF, or low pass filter, only allowing the lower frequencies to be heard through that channel. However, the main stereo output of the MGP mixers don't include any high pass filter, so you cannot eliminate the low frequency sounds from that channel. It's not normally a problem because the speaker system or amplifiers will often include any necessary high pass filter or crossover to eliminate the unwanted low frequencies. That would ensure that the low frequencies only reach the subwoofer to allow for a clearer and more punchy sound. Of course, for more flexibility, use the TF mixers where the Stereo Master includes a high pass filter and you can select individual channels to reach the subwoofer. But you'll want the bass guitar and kick drum inputs to still reach the main Stereo Master because those sounds do have some high frequency content which the subwoofers won't be able to reproduce. Talking of TF, here's a question from John related to episode 20 about output compression. He asks, is there a way to assign channels to a group and then put a compressor on the group? I like to compress the vocals in the mains via a group, but not in the monitors. Yes. That's not an unusual thing to do, and I assume he's running the main PA sound and monitors for the musicians from the same TF mixer. There are actually two or three nice options. First, set the monitor aux sends from the vocal channels to pre, and go to the console settings and bus set up to make sure the pre-fade send point is set to pre-EQ. Then you can be sure the compressor on the input channel will not reach the monitors, yet can still be used for the main PA mix. But if you really need the input EQ to reach the monitors, there's another option double the channel. On TF3 and TF5, inputs 1 to 8 can be doubled to inputs 33 to 40. If you use them for vocals, you can set compression on inputs 1 to 8 and send them to the main PA while using inputs 33 to 40 with EQ for the monitors. Lastly, as John wondered, yes, you can put a compressor on a group instead. Use any of the six stereo auxes as a group. Send the vocal mics post fader to one of those stereo auxes instead of the stereo master. Then send that aux to the stereo master and apply compression to the vocal group. Each aux channel has EQ and compression available. You could even use a multi-band compressor on one of the stereo auxes if you want to get fancy. Now the last couple of questions, which are a little bit different. Another John asks which instruments need a TRS or TS cable? That's a good question. TRS and TS are the same shape of jack plug, normally quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter size, but they differ slightly. TS means tip sleeve and is typically used for mono electric instruments like guitars. TRS means tip ring sleeve 
So they have three connections and actually can be used in two different ways. One TRS plug could carry a stereo signal for headphones or an effect unit. Or TRS could be used to carry a balanced mono signal from a keyboard, synthesizer or other electronic instrument. The advantage of a balanced mono line using TRS jacks over an unbalanced TS jack is that it's less prone to picking up interference and noise. Stereo instruments usually have two TRS connections for left and right balanced signals, rather than one stereo unbalanced connection. It allows the cables to be longer without adding noise. Make sure you use the correct cable and jack for each purpose. So typically, TS for guitars and TRS for keyboards. Our last question for now is quite easy to answer. How to update the Yamaha MGP mixer. Yes, even the MGP 24X and 32X mixers have firmware. You can download it from Yamaha's website. Type www.yamaha.com slash pro audio into your browser, then select your country. After that, you can click the downloads link and firmware link, then search for your product. You get an upgrade guide with the firmware package. For both MGP and TF mixers, a USB drive is used to load the firmware. It doesn't take long. Well, I hope I can continue to be helpful with all these videos and the future ones I'm currently working on. Feel free to ask any more questions. And of course, please press like and subscribe to the Yamaha Global Channel. See you again soon.